Hi, Sam. Hi, Dad. Um, <laughs> let's look at some amp distortion. Sounds good. Okay, let's listen. Let's hear it. Let's listen to some. Let's All look right. at slash listen. Yeah, we did the Crest amp. We listened to that mm. before. This is a lab group in FP6400, even though it says L Acoustics LA48A. Um, why? Well, L Acoustics, <laughs> early on with the VDOS system, were standard, standardizing on an amp. It was before they mm. made their own amps. And they licensed out, or they had these OEM made by Lab Group, and they put their own label on them. It's exactly the same thing with a different faceplate. Oh, And they okay. taped over some switches in the back. And these are what we toured with on Warp Tour for a bit? You had those on some of the stages, yes. Yeah. On, the, um, on the bigger stages. Yes. There was some on, on, Monster, the, v, on the VDOS rigs. We yes. used these, yes. Yeah, which was on with the XTA. left foot and right foot, which is what I was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and where, like, what time period like how far are we looking back with these guys um because we know that the crest audio is from like the 80s yeah i think the we bought our first vdos rig in 1998 97 okay. and i don't know if these were out yet i think okay. that we were running them on crest at the time so these aren't super modern, but they're still no, in use. I think they're probably early 2000s. Yeah, because when VDOS first came out, they were specking Crest and Crown mm. and uh, eventually QSC. And then they ended up saying, okay, those amps are all different. We want to standardize. And mm. then they licensed these. Got it. And then they got these guys. And so, yeah, we're still not... But they're still in use. They're not outdated-ish. Yeah, they're cool <laughs> They're in amp. use on Warped Tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're good. We've been um, we still have some in the system. It's a mm -hmm. good amp, um, but I don't I don't believe they make them anymore. They haven't made them in a while. Got it. So it's a a recently a more modern than the Crest, but not as modern as the new. Yeah, uh, yeah, cool got stuff. it. Cool. Just wanted to put that in a timeline. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of like the second generation of lightweight amps. The first okay. generation. Um, and what's the here. pound differential here? We're looking at. Um. We've well, that's a to great question. I forget what the power is on these. It's probably four to one uh, ratio, so it's probably four times the power for uh, two thirds the weight. Okay. Okay. Of Got the it. other ones, I should know all that, but I should have looked that up before. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of you. It. It's all right. Okay, so what we've got is a setup that allow us to hear the difference between a channel driven hard and a channel driven not hard. And so I've got to the exact same signal going into channel one and two, and then we've got a speaker hooked up across the outputs of one and two. Mm -hmm. So it's listening to the differences between channel one and two. Got it, yes. Now this amp here, I should clarify, is not the same as like uh, many amps out there. Normally there's a ground, a black terminal, which is ground, mm -hmm. and a red terminal, which is hot, or on an NL4, the mm -hmm. two, one and two minus would be grounds, and the two, uh, one and two pluses would be mm -hmm. the live wires. A lab group and amp, these lab LA, um, these LA 48s, lab group and FP 6400s are actually permanently in a form of bridge mono mode. What does that mean? Why? Um, I won't get into bridge mono mode too much because we did that in another video. But okay. we'll, um, what it means is on this amp particularly, when you run a signal into channel A. Ground is the one minus and the signal, the hot signal with all the voltage is on one plus. Mm -hmm. Two plus is also a ground. Mm -hmm. And two minus has mm -hmm. a, an, uh, an inverted version of the signal on it. So one plus, one minus, two plus, two, two minus. minus. Yeah. So for all practical purposes, you put a speaker on one, plus and minus and two plus and minus, they'll do exactly the same thing. Okay. But if you were to connect a speaker between the one minus and two plus, mm -hmm. you'd hear nothing. They're both grounds. Yeah, got it. Okay. So it's a little tricky there. We can, I'll get into... Pretty uh, much on, just also for your purposes with what you're doing right now, it's tricky. Yeah, it kind of threw yeah. me for a loop. I knew it, but then it was doing <laughs> this. So I ended up having to invert polarity on channel two Okay. to get into this to make it an in polarity signal and then revert polarity on mm -hmm. the banana plug. So that we're so getting that, the... And convert it to a normal amp output. Got so it, now, okay. So we did a lot of work plugs, to make this like this amp, basically. Just to do this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so let's All go right, ahead. so what signals do you got here? Um, I've got a tone generator. Tone generator, yep. Signal popper. Signal popper that's not been a signal. Music. Music. And got it. And since we have a cancellation test and we're listening to the difference between channels, I can bring the tone up and it's canceling out as you're <laughs> making it louder, which makes a lot of sense, of course. Okay, so now we've got We're sending signal to one and two, the identical signal to one and two. We're listening to the difference between the two. And do you want to go over, since we went in, over it in the last video, but why one fader is lower than the other? Oh, yeah. I've got the output hooked up so that um, I'm sending six more dB to the channel one and or six less dB to channel two. And the way I've got the speaker hooked up is six dB is half the voltage. And I've got two four ohm loads in series on channel one, two four ohm loads in series on channel two. And on channel one, where I'm sending 6 dB hotter signal, I'm connecting halfway in the middle of those mm -hmm. two loads, so it gets half the voltage. And on channel two, which is half the voltage, I'm connecting all the way at the hot. And so those two should be identical. Sig uh, those two signals will be um, not identical. They'll be 6 dB off. Yeah. And that way I can drive channel one 6 dB hotter and push that into clipping. Which while gets two us still, the distortion from channel one, which allows us to while hear the channel distortion. channel two is clean, clean, canceling out the clean part of channel one yeah. and leaving the distortion. And because that one won't be distorting, so we're only getting the distortion and not anything else. Exactly. Or very close to that, yes. So that's what them canceled at 82 hertz. Now hmm. watch what happens here. Um, I don't think you see it on the videos. I don't have a camera set up, but... We're in green on both channels with channel two a little bit lower than channel one. We're driving it. Starting to hear it. We're starting to hear it, but no. And then now channel one is starting to clip and we can hear it too. And that's what's being added to the mix. That's, the, that's what this amp clipping. sounds like when it's clipping mm -hmm. at 82 cycles. And we can move that down. And let's go muck around here. Let me bring it down and go. Oh. I love the distorted tone just becoming a weird tone of its own. Oh, that sent the amp into um, VHF Ooh. Protect. It did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> what does VHF protect mean? Um, these switch mode amplifiers, the power supplies mm -hmm. have a, a switch mode power supply that yeah. involves high frequencies. So reproducing high frequencies with a high frequency power supply uh, puts a lot of load on there. Yeah. And it's got a, a It just like, yeah. Yeah, it did not it's... like that. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> and here's 18K. Let's see if we can switch mode. Oh. It does not like it. So this What's amp... What am I smelling right now too? Is it just the amp being hot? I hope not. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, we're heating up the load too. I mean, we're running full yeah. power into the load. Something is that. stinky. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's enough of this tone. <laughs> so that's pure distortion. Now, watch mm. what happens if I take it out of the leave it in distortion, and we'll bring down the clean side. Mm. You can hear it sitting on top of there, right? Yeah. And we're very loud. I mean, this we're amp is running full blast into 8 ohm load. I mean, this is your system turned up all the way. That riz is what the distortion component created by the amp sounds like. Mm -hmm. So using limiters and protection so that doesn't happen is good yeah. or keeping your amps out of clip. Yeah. Uh, let's can we hear it with music? Yes, let's do that. So we'll start with um Up. I can get a cancellation here. I'm just barely touching the fader. 
<laughs> it's dangerous too because if you, yeah, you don't, it'll be so loud if he kills the cancellation. And a lot of this extra noise is kind of just you not getting the cancellation yes. properties perfect, right? Yeah, it should be closer to the center. And they could just be differentials in the way the amp's designed on each channel. Okay, now we're getting... So again, we're looking at the signal no, on yeah, amp not, one and two. We're not hearing, no. we're hearing the clip just barely starting, but we're not seeing the clip light. We're not yet. seeing the clip light. The clip light's... A little bit behind. There we go. That's really loud. That's really loud adding. All right, we can try it pink. That's interesting. There's definitely some sort of distortion there in the pink. Mm -hmm. Ugly. And we're not seeing any clip yet. All right. And do you have any weird EQ on it? No. Oh. Now, if I bring this down, we see how loud this is. That's interesting because we are hearing that um, it's not canceling out the pink noise very well. No, it doesn't. A lot high, now, what I'm guessing is there's a lot of high frequency energy in that and it's not really canceling mm -hmm. very well. These differentials are either distortions in one channel or nonlinearities in mm -hmm. one channel or mm -hmm. differentials in one channel. Um, what else do we want to do? Does that wrap up this? Now, what did you think of that compared to the crest? I wish I could remember the crest uh, a little bit better, but I mean, it felt like things were like, sharper on this one yeah the crest is more forgiving yeah the older school amp was more forgiving and had less edge to it mm -hmm. and it wasn't sensitive to the high frequencies and that vhf protection is kind of an indicator it does yeah. it has a little concern it, it's with the high touchy frequency. yeah where the crest didn't yeah and it felt i mean it, it felt like the additions weren't so they were harder to listen to because we listened to them adding it into the mix with like the song and it was harder to pull out the the distortion there it was really easy yeah. to pull out here yes the, the distortion definitely had more edge to it yeah but the crest had that um power supply ripple thing that, yeah that tone thing, yeah which we didn't which see we didn't in, see in yeah. this one yeah, we looked we could, at that was the point of looking at the 60 yeah, yeah, hertz yeah. cycle back at the beginning <laughs> before we started frying the amp so yeah at this um cycle tone in the last amp we were hearing oscillation. Yeah, yeah we, were, uh, 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 we were hearing beating of two frequencies yeah. that are very similar. And that's not happening here, it's smooth. Yeah, so we're not hearing any power supply ripple from the AC voltage. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I'd be very interested to see what a much more modern amp does. All right, let's um, dive into the next one. All right, sounds good. Okay, thanks, Sam. Thank you. <laughs>